I'd like to do a problem in elementary mass balances. Uh, in order to highlight how to approach a problem, beginning with reading the problem, figuring out what it's asking, and carrying out the calculations to completion. The problem I've chosen is not too difficult, but I'm going to be emphasizing the decision making along the way to help uh, a new student figure out how to approach these kind of um, and mass balance problems. So the problem I'm considering is this. A chemical plant produces an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide that is 20 percent sodium hydroxide by mass. The company desires to produce a stream of 8 percent sodium hydroxide solution by diluting a stream of the 20 percent solution with a stream of pure water. What flow rates of the pure water and the 20% solution stream will, be, will produce this given amount of the 8% solution? So someone who's an expert in this kind of problem solving would jump right in, starting to draw, and solve the problem. But when a student is new at this, it's a bit more of a challenge. I recommend that you read the problem a few times uh, to try to figure out what exactly is the subject of the problem. So if we read this again, we see that we have a stream that's concentrated and a stream that's less concentrated of an aqueous solution, meaning there's water there. And we want to dilute this stream to make a less, a less concentrated stream. So it's a mixing problem. So our first, our first step here then is to draw the mixing problem and to label our drawing with the facts that are present in the problem. The problem says that we're going to mix two streams. So I'm going to draw a mixer with the two streams and I'm going to give myself lots of space to label the problem. The two streams that we're going to mix are 20% sodium hydroxide aqueous, which means the balance is 80% water by mass. So the way I'm going to label this is to say that there is 0 0.2 pound mass sodium hydroxide per pound mass total in this stream, and 0 0.80 immediately using the fact that the mass fractions must add to 1 pound mass water per pound mass total. Now the plan is to produce a stream that is 8 percent sodium hydroxide, so here's the product stream. So I'll write that this stream is 0 0.08 pound mass sodium hydroxide per pound mass total and the balance must be 0 0.92 pound mass water per pound mass total. The stream that we're going to use to do this dilution is a pure water stream so this is pure water. Reading again, chemical plant produces this stream. You want to produce a dilute stream by mixing the 20% with pure water. We wrote that. What flow rate of pure water and concentrated stream will produce 2310 pound mass per minute of the 8%? So we, we do also know that there is 2310 pound mass per minute of this stream. That's everything that's been given in the problem. Let me neaten this up a little bit. This is 0 0.92. We don't know the flow rate of this stream. We don't know the flow rate of this stream, although we do know it's pure water. And we're ready to start. Now, the principle that we're going to use to solve the problem is that mass is conserved. So we're going to need some names here to be able to do the mass balances. I'm going to call this stream Q1 pound mass per minute, total of the stream, and I'll call this Q2 pound mass per minute. 
So we have two types of chemicals here. We have the sodium hydroxide and we have the water. They both balance. Sodium hydroxide comes in here and leaves here. Water comes in two places and leaves one place. And of course, there's always the overall mass balance. So let's start with the overall mass balance. The total mass in is Q1 plus Q2 is equal to 2310 pound mass per minute. We're certainly going to need that balance as we go forward with the problem. The second balance we can do is either the sodium hydroxide or the water. Both will lead us to the solution. The sodium hydroxide balance is a little bit easier because it only comes in one place and leaves one place. That's called a tie component. The component that comes in one place and leaves one place is much easier to get information out of than one that comes in two places and leaves one place. So the second balance I'll do is going to be the sodium hydroxide balance. Now the sodium hydroxide comes in this one stream and it's 0 0.2 pound mass of NaOH per pound mass total. Times the flow rate, Q1 pound mass total per minute. That's all of the sodium hydroxide coming in. And coming out, we have 0 0.08 pound mass sodium hydroxide per pound mass total. Times 2310 pound mass per minute. This is pound mass stream total per minute. That cancels with pound mass total. This is pound mass stream total, cancels with pound mass total. We get pound mass sodium hydroxide per minute, pound mass sodium hydroxide per minute, everything balances nicely. So now we finish 0.2 Q1 equals 0.08 times 2310. And so Q1 is equal to 0.08 2310 divided by 0.2. Using our calculator, we can figure that out. 0 0.08, 2310, 0 0.2 is 924 pound mass per minute. Q1. We just have to go back to the overall mass balance to solve for Q2. The overall mass balance said Q1 plus Q2 equals 2310, and so Q2 must equal 2310 minus 924, or 1,386 pound mass per minute. Having done that, we have all the information that we need for any other calculation we might want with this problem. We know Q1, we know Q2. Um, if we wanted ratios, we could calculate them. Having solved the problem, we can just go back to the beginning and see what we did as a strategy. We read the problem, and the most important thing was to get the spreadsheet correctly. So we read it carefully, labeling our diagram with the concentrations and with the unknown streams. Then we looked at the kinds of balances we could do overall versus component balances. We chose the simpler one and we were able in very few steps to get all of the flow streams that we wanted. In a more, calcul in a more complicated problem, uh, the flow sheet is even more important 
But this methodology of labeling every stream carefully and including putting the, minute, the units down would be very handy and it leads to the, a good solution of this kind of mass, and mass balance problem.